Hello, the timer has gone off, which means it's time to start the lunchtime live stream. So we are going to make the Barden dress, which I've printed. And forgot to get from the printer. Um, so here is the Barden dress. It's a lovely little summer frock that has some gathered tiers. So there's a second tier and a third tier and it's like a tank for the top and it has some darts and we're going to use bias tape. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. But however, I just want to say um, we've got some awesome classes coming up, like some actual classes where you log in, we sew together, you ask questions, we answer them. The classes are taught by myself and by Rachel Batliner, who is an instructor here with me for many years. Um, so the two of us are teaching some cool classes coming up. So I did wanna take a second to talk about those and, and to just let you know the difference. So this is a live stream. I sew it. There's a chat box that I'll look at from time to time, but this is mostly like I'm showing you what to do and you can choose to do it with me. Um, but the classes are interactive. We're all on Zoom together. They're small. You know, there's not usually more than eight people on at a time. Um, Rachel and I have gotten really good at troubleshooting. So if you run into trouble and you're like, this is not working correctly, we can figure it out as best we could if we were sitting there with you. So I just wanted to say that. The Arlo Jacket is a class that I'm teaching tomorrow night and next Tuesday. So it's a two week class, Tuesday night starting tomorrow and it's a track jacket with some awesome pockets. I have one so far and I love it. Um, has the separating zipper on it. So you learn how to do that. It has a really kind of funky pocket. So that's a good thing to learn and it's knits. So you'll learn that. Uh, what else do I have coming up? Oh, I have the dress lab that is coming up where we're going to be making the LED dress from closet core patterns. And this is a three week class because there's a lot that goes into this dress. Um, and we're going to be cutting it out and doing all of the measurements together. So that's a great in-depth dress making class. The sagebrush top is a top that I have too many of because I love this pattern so much. That's coming up. Um, oh, sorry. The LED is actually coming up on Monday starting May 10th. So fairly soon. I think it starts two weeks from tonight. That's the dress class. Three weeks, May 10th, 17th, and 24th. And then sagebrush is happening on a Tuesday. May 11th and May 18th from seven to nine. And then finally, I just happened to, there's some other classes on the schedule, but these are the ones that I happen to have the patterns in front of me. This Hadley top, Rachel's teaching this one. It's gonna be June 3rd and June 10th. Those are Thursday nights. Uh, and they all take place usually seven to nine Eastern time. So you can find the adult class schedule over on our website, hipstitch.co. Just look under adult classes. You'll see everything. All right. So on to the Barden dress. Today we're doing part one. So we're just going to be doing the top. We're going to be um, working on the top tier. Next time we'll do the dress tiers and all the gathering and all the hemming. So I um, usually split these live streams into two separate classes. So that's what we're doing today. I'm going to take a look over on the, looks like it's live streaming. Okay. If, if it's never, you know, working correctly and you're like, something is wrong, just put it in the chat, but looks like we're on our way. All right. Barden dress. Let's cut it out. I'm going to change my camera view. 
get rid of my timer, my post-it, very official. Um, and I'm gonna push the camera up so you can see everything that's happening here. So I've got the back, it's cut on the fold. I've got my size cut out from the patterns. So now I'm just going to cut the fabric. I have a giant piece of extra that is the perfect size for that pocket piece. So I am not going to cut into that. I'm gonna be really careful when I cut and I would encourage you to do the same. I don't know if you guys use scissors like I do, but I'm a big scissors person. I don't normally use a rotary cutter when I cut because it's just what I'm used to. So you could totally use a rotary cutter. You just wanna make sure you have a self-healing mat underneath like this. Um, but I don't know, scissors are what I'm used to. So that is what I go for. So this is the back. It's on the fold, there's no dart in it. So I'm just gonna put it aside as is. And then, like I said, I'm gonna keep this nice big piece handy because I'm gonna cut my pocket out of it. And you'll see what I mean. So on the front, I actually took that pot pattern piece for the pocket and I placed it. Now it is a, <laughs> it is opposite the grain that they were suggesting, but this is a woven, this is a quilter's cotton that I'm using. I just washed some quilter's cotton. That's what I'm using for the dress for the pocket to be turned that way in an effort to save fabric is totally fine. Okay. Um, the grain on a woven is going perpendicular and horizontal. So if you just do a complete 90 degree turn on there, it will be fine. Don't put it on the diagonal because that'll be a little bit weird. Um, it'll stretch in weird ways, but if you put the pocket 90 degrees at a 90 degree angle from what it's suggesting, it'll be totally fine. I just wanted to mention that. So I'm gonna do the same thing over on that back. Okay, if you have any questions about grain of fabric, don't hesitate to send me an email. Um, but I'm gonna cut. I am cutting. So this one looks a little weird on the side because there is a dart. Uh, I'm gonna do this, I think. Right. So this little dart here is going to make it fit on the chest a little bit better. So we want that. And let's see, I'm just gonna trim a little bit here. So like I said, I did wash my fabric. Um, with quilters cotton especially, I just like to wash it beforehand because it's gonna shrink a little bit. Um, so I like to do that before I work with it, but if you don't, you know, if you don't, or you don't, you can't, cause you don't have time or whatever, it's not the end of the world. Don't worry. You can just use it and know that it's going to shrink a little. It doesn't shrink a lot, but it will shrink a little. Okay. Here's my pocket. And with, actually this is why i'm loving this dress i'm kind of excited about it is because it's this lovely like loose fitting sundress that has these gigantic pockets i'm actually going to keep this pocket pattern <laughs> really handy because a lot of times dresses and skirts will have pockets in them but they're like tiny and I don't know about you, but I like a nice big pocket. So like you're putting your hand in it. So that's the way it's going to kind of go. And your hand is in here. Your stuff falls down here. I should do that, but then I can't turn my hand. Anyway, it's gigantic. And I love that. So you can use this pocket pattern for other garments that maybe don't have as large a pocket. So there's two, I need two pairs, which translates to four. Um, 
So I'm going to put that, well, I can put it in the same, in the correct direction on here. Oh, lovely. So then I'll have my two pairs. And that's all I'm going to cut today. So we're not going to worry about the tears. Oops, I just totally cut the pattern piece. Happens. Um, we're not going to cut the tiers, the dress parts today. I will do that next week when we start to sew them. I guess I didn't need to really cut the pockets because I'm not going to be doing much with those either, but I like to use that extra bit from the bodice pieces to make these pockets. So I will put these pocket pieces aside. And I'm going to bring back the front piece. Okay. And I'm going to get that camera a little bit higher. I'm going to unpin it. And we're going to draw some darts on here. But we're going to do it on the wrong side. So there's my bodice front. And I'm doing H, so I'm marking the dot that says H, right? So what I tend to do is I'll put a hole, oops, and then I can mark the dot like that. And then my dart lines are here and here. And then, once you remove that, hopefully you can see that I will connect the dot to each of those dart lines. One and two. Okay. Oops. Make sure we can see that a little better. And this is a uh, a special pen that when you iron it, it goes away. Honestly, if you just use a regular pen, it's not the end of the world because it's going to come out in the wash anyway. Okay, for the other side, it's not as obvious because it's not marked on the back, but I do have my hole so I can make my dot there and then I can pretty much see through the pattern that there's one dart line there's another, remove the pattern piece, and there they are. It's definitely kind of a cropped bodice. So I guess kind of like empire, wasted. Be a good like beach dress, you know, wear over your bathing suit kind of dress. I'm so looking forward to wearing clothes like that. All right, so I've got them marked and like any good dart, you're gonna pretend that you have a full line down the middle and then you're going to put, fold that dart so that the two lines of it are on top of each other. Okay, so I'm gonna just stick my pin like that so I can continue that fold line all the way to here, all the way to the dot. So I'm gonna mark that with a pin and stick one in the middle. I'm gonna bring the camera a little bit closer because I wanna show you something. I'm gonna grab one more pen and I wanna show you a way to make sure the lines of the dart are on top of each other. So if you're looking at the line on the right side on the front and you pin along that line, you can flip it. Ooh, I'm way off to see if you are pinning the other line because the idea is you're going to sew on this line and therefore you're going to sew on that line. So I need to adjust. I need to move my pins so that I can get my 
dart lines on top of each other. Oh, it's closer. There we go. So you just kind of adjust everything. And then I pin at the end so I know when to stop. And in the middle, I just check up here. Yeah, I'm still good. Okay, so my dart is folded correctly and I'm gonna be sewing along line, that line and in turn sewing along the line on the back, okay? Same thing over here. It's like we're pretending that there's a line right down the middle of the dart. And we're folding it so that potentially the dart lines are on top of each other. Grab another pin, see how close we are. Oof. Spot on. I love it when that happens. So once you're spot on, you just want to stick some pins. Let me just make sure I'm spot on up here too. Eh, not as much. I'm going to just roll this a little bit this way. Better. Pin at the beginning of the dart, pin in the middle. Uh, that one seems like it's funky and moving around a little bit, so I'm gonna stick another pin. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so now I have put the camera up higher so you can see the full picture. I've got my two darts. Even. Yeah. Pretty much. Okay. Let me clear some space over here by my sewing machine. And when we go to so, so, so we're sewing on the line of the dart, right? And when I get to the end of the dart, I'm going to bring my stitch length lower and lower and lower as I come to the end, okay? And by doing that, by bringing that stitch length down, we eliminate the need to back stitch and the beginning of the dart will not come undone. It's very sturdy and you don't have to back stitch it. So we're gonna finger press that dart down and do the same thing. Starting from the edge, and bring this back up to three. I do back stitch at the beginning. And then start to bring this down. I think my thread just broke. Fairly old thread. I probably shouldn't be. I'm someone who loves to use up stuff. And I have brand new orange thread, but I had this old 
So I want to see how it does if I keep moving. If it keeps breaking, I'll change the board. Okie doke. Here is my bodice. Looks pretty good. I'll try it on in between. Um, but what I did forget is I forgot to um, stay stitch. So I'm going to stay stitch from the top to the middle, from the top to the middle, and from the top to the side, and the top to the side. And what this is going to do is just make it so that the uh, neckline and the armhole doesn't stretch out. So we just want to stay stitch it. I'm going to put the stitch length at three and I'm going to stay really close to the edge. And last but not least, I think I'm just going to flip it so I can start at the top and work my way down. Okay. Stay stitching is complete. I do want to stay stitch on the back as well. So let's take the pins out and remove the pattern. There are no darts on the back. But we're going to stay stitch the same way. Turn that camera back. Oops. Okay. I've got my back. And I'm going to start with the neckline at the top, work my way to the middle from both sides. There's my middle. And And the armhole starting at the top. And the other armhole starting at the top. Okay. 
Okay, back to the cutting and pinning table. Now I've got my front, which has my darts. I've got my back and putting them right sides together. I'm gonna first match up the shoulder seams here. And I'm gonna pin those together. And the other shoulder seam. And I get my thumb cushion and bring it closer. All right, those are pinned. And then we're starting on the side. So my sides line up. I want to make sure that the dart, you can press those with the iron or just finger press them down, but you want it to go down when you pin it on there. So I'll stick that pin right there. And then starting from the armpit, I'll put a few more all the way down to the bottom and then same on this side. Um, the dart is finger pressed down, lining up the side seams, starting at the armpit. And notice how the balls of my pins are going to be out sticking out past the fabric so that no matter how you sew it from what direction the, the balls of the pins are showing. So they're super easy to find. Okay, so now that that is pinned, I'm going to sew the shoulders and I'm going to sew the sides. Okay, let's do it. Now I'm going to take a 5 8 inch seam allowance. So I've got the edge of the foot lined up and I have my needle slightly to the left. And I know that for me, that is approximately 5 eighths of an inch for the seam allowance. I'm back stitching at the beginning and then I'm going to back stitch at the end. All right, there's my shoulder seams. Now I'll do the side. Oh, I just ran over a pen. Don't do that. Okay. So now I've got my top. Let me turn it right side out. And that's going to be the top of my dress. Since I want this to be loose fitting, I am going to, before I put my um, seam binding in, I've got this kind of matches the color of the flower there. I don't even know what it is. It's almost satiny. That's what I'm going to use for seam binding. You can use any sort of bias tape that you have. I tend to buy this bias tape. I mean, you can buy it at any, you know, sewing supply or fabric place, but I tend to find it a lot at like, um, oh, like thrift shops, you know, if they've got a sewing supply or craft 
section, I will buy bias tape a lot of times there because it's perfectly good. And a lot of times it's just still in the package. So I'm pretty sure this is some old vintage bias tape that I've had forever, but it matches pretty well, I think. Um, the other thing I wanted to do was I'm going to try it on. I'm just going to do it over my shirt because I want to see. Yeah, I think it's going to be good. Knuckles kind of wide. I do have a shirt on underneath. Do I want to bring that in at all? Hard to tell. Let me move to my mirror real quick. Uh, nah, I'm gonna leave it. I don't want it to be too tight. I feel like it's a little bit loose, but that is the way that I want it. So I'm gonna leave the sides where it is. If you're trying yours on and you feel like it's really boxy, you can take my suggestion is if you just want it to be a little bit more fitted is just take a quarter inch uh slit you know just sew it about a quarter inch from your original stitching on the shoulder seams and the side seams and that'll bring everything in and make it a little bit more fitted uh, but for me, I'm going to leave it and let me put the camera view back so you can see. And I do want to have it right side out when I put the bias tape on. Okay. So bias tape is kind of a fun not super rigid thing, at least the way I do it. Um, I'll start with the neckline. I'm gonna open up my bias tape and get a bunch off of the thing. And then I'm going to start at the back and kind of loosely figure out how much bias tape it takes to get to the front middle. Then I know that's halfway. I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna give it a little bit of extra just because I always do that to make sure I have enough. And then I'm gonna find the middle of my bias tape and mark that with a pin because that is gonna go right in the middle. And you'll see my bias tape has the edges folded in. So, I'm going to lay, I'm not going to open up that fold at all. For me, I'm just going to sew on the folded edge and then the rest of it will get folded inside. I'm going to line it up with the front of the dress and go around the edge of the neckline. Really important. Don't make it so on the edge of the neckline that you can't see the fabric underneath. Line it up so you can still just see the fabric peeking out. Trust me, it'll just make your life easier once you sew this in, if it's not right at the edge, okay? It's almost like if you line it up on the, with the edge that you stay stitched, that is perfect. Again, you see I am putting my pins perpendicular to what I'm going to sew. And that's going to make it super easy to take them out as I go. And I'm just going to continue around till I get to the back middle. I'll keep going in a second, but I'm going to now Continue here.
and all the way around to the back. And you should, here, I'll flip the whole thing over, have more than enough, yeah. So get to the back middle, which is right about here. Get this side to the back middle. They can overlap. You, they don't have to even be sewn together because the next step, so I'm gonna actually probably just cut that extra pin this last bit. Cut that extra. They're overlapping just slightly in the middle. And then I'm going to sew along the edge. And because the bias tape is folded on the edge, that is a good um, place to shoot for where you want to sew. You want to stay pretty close to the neck edge. So that means stay on the fold of the bias tape and you will be sure to still be sewing on the shirt because you can still see the shirt peeking up past your bias tape. Make sense? Hopefully. All right, place it on the machine so that you're just sewing one layer of dress and one layer of bias tape. Let me get a little closer there. Okay, lower the foot. I'm on the folded edge of the bias tape. Turn that off. Can you see that better? Ooh, just flipped it off the thing. Anyway, you want to be on the fold of that bias tape. Let's see if I can get it back in the. Back in the little tripod. Okay. Well, the light has to be on because I have to have the power on on my machine. Here we go. Change the stitch length back to what I want. And every so often, I'm just double checking that the bias type doesn't come up and cover up the edge of the shirt or the edge of the dress top. Oh, pretty sure I just bunched up what I was sewing. Oh, no, I didn't. Look at that. Okay. I think I was about to. Tragedy averted. I will keep going, but it's a great reminder. Don't let things get caught up under that shouldn't.
Okay, I'm back to where I was. Taking it off of the sewing machine. Now this is the back and this is all gonna go inside so it's just fine. That they're overlapping like that. So you're gonna want to press all this binding tape in, or you can use your fingers like me and go all the way around, just putting the bias tape inside the neckline and covering up that raw edge. And because the bias tape, it's called bias tape because it's cut on the bias. And that makes it really easy for it to go around these curves without getting all wrinkled up. So we'll continue folding that in as we go. And then what you're gonna do or what I'm gonna do that's a pin that does not have a sharp end. I'm going to toss that. Uh, what we're going to do is top stitch that edge so that all that bias tape stays on the inside and is not visible. You can see we went from having the bias tape on the outside to it's all on this side tucked neatly in. So we're gonna continue that. And again, like I said, if you wanna get your iron and do all of the pressing that way, you can, um, but you don't have to, you can do it the way I'm doing it. And just to talk about the pattern a little bit, this is another pattern that if you haven't downloaded it yet, um, definitely go check it out. It's Peppermint Magazine. I mean, you can get it from my website, hipstitch.co slash lunch break. Um, the patterns that we use for these lunchtime live streams, the links are right there but it will link you over to Peppermint Magazine, which is this great um, sewing magazine or newsletter, kind of online newsletter that I believe is out of the UK or Australia. Oh, I should really figure that out. Um, and they feature pattern designers who will create these really great patterns that are 100% free. You can download them right from their magazine. Um, you usually have to enter your email address, but you get the free download. And they're really good because they come with this great set of instructions. You know, a lot of times when you find free patterns online, they're really kind of hit or miss. Like they could be really terrible. They could be completely wrong. I just like that they're straight from the peppermint magazine so you know that they're made really well and they have sponsors so this one is sponsored by spoonflower which is this amazing fabric website where you can print your own fabric designs on demand um, so they sponsored this so you know it's going to be good so i just wanted to say that about the patterns because without that we wouldn't have a pattern today and it's really nice that we have this cool pattern um okay my neckline bias tape is in some of my stay stitching is showing i don't really care because i'm about to top stitch anyway we're gonna place the edge of the neckline onto the sewing machine i just tend to not start right in the beginning and start wherever you want but when I'm top, top stitching, I like to start in the 
back. So I'm top stitching really close to the edge, about a quarter inch. What I like to do is have the, um, this part of my presser fit up against the edge. So it's like this little ski is off the fabric and kind of riding right up against the edge, giving me a little bit less than a quarter inch seam allowance for this top stitching. And one thing I want to say too is that when you're going around an edge like this that's curved, see how it's like curving like this? Hold it like that when you're sewing it. Like hold it so it does the natural curve. Don't put it on the machine and like force it to straighten out. Keep that curve. So I'm coming back to where I started. I'm going to snip my thread and make sure, oh, I just ran over a pin. Oops. Make sure I line up with that top stitching of where I started. And do the tiniest little back stitch. Okay, here is my top with my top stitched neckline. Not bad. It's in there, looks good. And now I'm gonna do the same thing with each of the armpits. So I'm gonna take the seam binding and pull some off. Oof, I don't know if I'm have enough. Let's see. Is that enough to get me through? Oh yeah, just enough. Just enough. Okay, cutting that in half, one for each armhole. It doesn't really matter where you start. So I'm just gonna kind of start here in the front and start with the middle of my seam binding and start pinning that on. Let me just turn this so I can maneuver it a little better. Again, make sure the edge of the fabric peeks out. I really hope I make it all the way around the armhole. Use some of my pins that I just left in a big mess. Oh, phew, I made it around. Look at that, that was like 
perfect. The amount of bias tape I had for this project. Sometimes it just works out. All right, so I'm all the way around. I'm going to sew this and probably will not get to the other sleeve, but I want to do this side, show you. So here's how it looks. Currently it's on the outside. I'm going to sew that and then bring it into the inside. Okay, here we go. And I am gonna slip off. Uh, and I wanna start in the back. I'm on the back currently. Great. And I'm back where I started. But bring it over. And just like on that neckline, I'm going to fold that in to the inside and get started and pin or iron, whatever you want to do. Keeping the curve of the armhole so nothing gets too bunched up. And I got a pin that just feels like it's not going to go in. So I'm going to toss it. Fold it in. We've got about five minutes left. I'm going to get all this pinned inside and I'm going to top stitch it for, and that's where I'll finish up part one of the Barden dress. Um, I will do the other armhole before we see each other again next Monday. So if you're sewing along with me, get that done as well. And then we will cut out the tiers of the dress. We will gather them because there's a lot of gathering. Here's the pinned armhole. I'm going to sew that now. Um, so we will gather the tiers, the dress next time. So basically we finished this. Next time we will gather tier two, we will gather tier three, and then you can hem the dress. You may want to make it slightly shorter um, than what they have. So we'll save the hemming for the end. And, oh, and we have to put our pockets in. They don't show on here, obviously, because they're inside. They're gonna be in this seam. So we'll do that next week. So we have quite a bit to do next week, um, but it's gonna be a really fun dress. So last bit, I will go over to the sewing machine and sew that armpit, and then we'll call it a day. If you have questions, don't feel afraid to email me. I hope you um, 
are having a good time. I'm going to, so. And I wanna start, I always start top stitching in a circle on the back. That is my rule. Just because when you do that little back stitch, it'll be slight, slightly visible. <laughs> so start in the back. And again, it's really curved. So make sure you continue to keep it curved. So that's why I'm like, like that. And there we go. So you can see what a difference the bias tape makes. Nice and finished, nice and finished. Got some threads hanging off, I'll cut those. And then this one is still the raw edge. So I will finish this one up um for next week and like i said i'll we will finish up the dress i have hope you have enjoyed this lunchtime live stream and i will see you next week for part two of the garden dress <laughs>